So we have all our nice functionality here, but uh, some of these bones are no longer useful because their functionality is being accessed via these other control bones. So, so we're going to go ahead and hide those bones that we no longer need to access. So we'll go to the armature panel, and you can see the visibility layers here. And you can see that just the first layer is visible. We'll make this layer visible too for the moment. Then we'll select uh, this bone, which we're going to hide. We'll go to its bone panel and find its its layer, and we can put it onto that second layer that we just made visible. Now we'll do the same for all the bones that we want to hide. This bone, the toe target, and the heel. Now if we go back to the armature panel and make only the first layer visible, that hides all those other bones. So only the useful bones are now visible. We can rotate up around the toe, we can rotate back and forth around the ball and the heel. We'll also change the armature's display type to stick, which is a very clean uh, display mode. So that's quite nice. But if we look at the finished rig here, you can see that the foot and uh, the other bones here um, have a visual representation which is more like a foot, and uh, in, in the case of the foot, and more like um, the well, the controls really suggest um, by their shape what you're supposed to do with them. Like this is only moved up and down, so it has an up and down arrow shape. So we'll do that for our, our other rig here. We'll do the tarsal bone. So we need to add a mesh, and we'll start with a cube. You can see it's very big, but uh, so that's going to cause a problem in a moment. But first, we'll uh, oh, first we should name that that um, mesh. We'll call it widget, and then tarsal because it's going to be a widget for the tarsal bone, then we'll select the tarsal bone, go to its bone panel, then scroll down to where it says display, and we'll choose the widget tarsal from the options. So you can see that because the bone has a different orientation and size to the box, uh, it's going to be difficult to um, create the right shape that we want. So we're going to align this box to the bone but uh, to do that, we need to make it clear what the alignment, what the orientation of the box is, and we'll do that by giving it some shape to begin with. Just scale this down a bit, then you can see it's pointing that way. Then uh, we'll just select this bit, and so now you can really see that the box has been rotated in the opposite direction to the to the bone, so we'll rotate it 180 degrees. Go into side view. Then uh, we can align the box to the bone, at least its position. We'll select the bone and choose Shift S, uh, cursor to selected, and then choose the box and choose Shift S and selection to cursor. So now they're aligned like that. We can uh, scale the box down quite a lot then we'll rotate it into alignment and now this is just doing it by eye we'll line up the box uh, by rotating like this, scaling down and you can be as accurate as you want Going to be fairly accurate here. I think it's worth it. Yep, that's pretty much spot on. Now I'll zoom out again. And now we can really start to give shape to the box and therefore to the bone that's using it as its representation. So we'll, with the box selected, we'll press tab to go into edit mode. And I'll try and be fairly quick with this. Um, Or B to box select. Moving this um, should be there. 
She's making the shape, the rough shape of a foot here. I think I'll go in and refine the modelling a bit in a moment, like this. Just trying to align it to the grid here. So we have a nice square representation. I'll do that for these four corners and we'll align this top corner to the ankle. And this bottom corner to the heel. Okay, that's pretty good. Now uh, I'll just add in some more definition here by selecting these and then W2 subdivide then box selecting that and making it nice and square with the heel and there we have it and when we tab out oh well, you can see it's alright from the side view but it needs to be adjusted from the top so we'll do that now, tab again, and then all, and use the scale tool, but we need now uh, global orientation. And that looks about right, right, that's fine. Okay, now when we press Z, we can see that the box is just uh, the right shape. Now we'll place the box itself onto another layer by pressing M and then choosing this layer and you can see that the foot is still being represented by that box mesh. Now when we rotate the foot around using our control we can see more clearly that it's rotating very nicely around the exact heel and it rotates forwards around the ball of the foot. So that's a nice representation. Now the same needs to be done for all these other bones, uh, so I'll do that quickly off screen because it's nothing new, but it is a little, a little bit time consuming. So see you in a moment. Okay, so this is uh, the rig with all of the shapes done, and I'll also just in this um, options panel here, I'll choose under the display options to turn off relationship lines because we don't need those anymore. So now we have all of the shapes on this. Uh, layer here and all of the rig objects on this layer here. Oops, there's one that is left in the wrong place. So select that and put it onto the right layer. Ah, yes, and uh, this has had the display option. Here's the shape that this bone is using, widget toe, and the display option has been wireframe. It shouldn't be for this one. But you do have to be careful when you have uh, these shapes are just made up of edges. And uh, if they don't have display as wireframe ticked, then you won't be able to see them at all when you're in shaded mode. So in order to see them in shaded mode, you need to click on display as wireframe. So now we have a very nice rig with good controls. And there are just a few tiny little things that we can do to really make this rig quite nice and professional. So we'll do those things in the next video. It'll be a short one, I think. So see you soon.